All right, hey, sup, people? Marco here. And uh, this time around, we're going to be talking about the Geyser by Dark Ronin Mods. Okay, so this is what it looks like with the standard cap. The standard cap has the, uh, the cooling fins on the top to prevent your drip tip from heating up if you don't have a, one of those Delrin ones. It has the, uh, the Geyser name and logo laser etched onto the front, and on the opposite side we have the Dark Ronin Mods logo. The, uh, the brass portion, so this is made of 304 grade stainless steel with a polished finish. Okay, so it has that nice mirror-like look. And the bottom portion is made of brass, which has the airflow selection channels. So these slits mean something. They aren't there for aesthetic purposes, and I'm going to discuss that later on. This dot is the indicator as to how many airflow channels are open, which I'm also going to discuss in further detail later. And we have the competition top cap, which will soon be sold separately. Uh, it was on promotion initially for the pre-order, so you could get it for free if you ordered it uh, ahead of time. So you're, I'm going to talk about the competition top cap in a bit. This is the packaging. It has this nice, uh, I don't know, it looks like polycarb to me. It has this uh, threaded portion. The atomizer, when you buy it, is stuck onto this 510 connection right here, which uh, fastens down onto the, I don't know if it's polycarb or reinforced plastic, whatever. It fastens down onto that, has the dark Ronin logo right there, and it stands up nice like that. Okay, enough about the packaging. Let's uh, take a look at how it performs. Okay, so I have this built on a quad coil. This is a quad pole atomizer, which I'm going to show you in a bit. And I have it built on a quad coil. It's not rated all that low. And I have it on a mech mod, so this is pretty much what it looks like. I have all four airflow channels fully open right now using the other uh, standard top cap. So this is pretty much what it looks like. All right. So obviously it's a lot tighter using the standard top cap, although there is adequate ventilation provided to the coils. Now this is what it looks like on the inside. Okay. It has this Delrin piece right here, which um, prevents the poles from wobbling. I would assume that's what it does. But it also doubles as like a sort of a juice catcher of sorts, because when you drip straight down through the, uh, the hole, right there, or the competition top cap, it distributes the flow evenly among the four coils. Okay, so if you're building a dual, make sure that you have the cotton leads tucked to the side so that they wick properly. This isn't the prettiest quad coil out there. Again, it's not something you're going to see on coil porn. It's probably one of the ugliest shitty coils I've built, but it does vape pretty well. So the airflow channels are situated underneath each coil. Right there. So the airflow channels are right there underneath, facing each coil. Now, how do you find out which coils are getting the ventilation every time you select it using the, uh, the control ring? Well, I'm going to get to that in a bit, okay? I'm going to show you first what it, what it vapes like with the competition top cap. Now, the competition top cap is, um, if you take a look at it, it has these little um, perforations going all across. It has a built, well, not built in, but a threaded drip cap, if you will which measures a whopping 18 millimeters in diameter. That is one huge motherfucking drip tip. It also features similar engraves and similar laser etching. The guys are on one end and the Dark Ronin Mods logo on the other. Made of the same 304 grade stainless steel, albeit a bit thinner, and it fastens down with threads as well, similar to the standard top cap. Okay, there's no doming on this one. There is marginal doming on the standard cap. So that's the, uh, the prominent difference right there. Now, this is what it vapes like with the competition top cap, the extremely loose draw. I'm not changing any of the airflow settings. We're still going to have ventilation going to all four.
huge, huge difference by way of vapor output. Now, this is what we are going to be talking about in more detail, how the airflow channels work. So I'm going to take my cotton wicks out. Looks like I'm going to have to do this manually. Okay, we're going to be taking the, uh, the cotton wicks all the way out. So I can show you the interior without any obstructions. All right, there you go. So the cotton wicks are out. There. This is what it looks like bare, with the coils, of course. This Delrin piece can be taken out. You simply have to pry it out, probably with a screwdriver. can be pried out very easily, like that. And that's what it looks like. Now, removing the Delrin piece allows you to see the numbering on each coil. I don't think the camera can focus on it because the coils are installed, but there are numberings on them. One to four. Okay? The numbers situated on each airflow channel indicate which coils are getting the ventilation needed. Now you're going to notice these little serrations right here that get bigger, okay, on the very base of the atomizer. There's one that's really small, one that is of medium length, and one that runs all the way down across the height of the, the base. You can see it right there. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the dot is the control point. Now, this setting ventilates two of them, the ones numbered one and three. Okay? Moving it to the medium-sized slit ventilates three of them, which would be coils one, three, and four, or airflow channels one, three, and four. Of course, opening it all the way up ventilates all four of them, so I'm not going to have to count for you. So again, using the uh, tightest setting available, it ventilates coils one and three, or airflow ports one and three. The second one ventilates one, three, and four, and the biggest one opens all four of them up for maximum airflow going to each of the coils. So once you've built them on a quad coil setting, it should look something, whoa, shit. It should look something like that. Okay. It fastens down using Phillips heads on each one, and the kit comes with two spares. So you're allowed to be an idiot twice. You can lose your screws twice, but that's it. The rest, I think you're gonna have to pay for them, okay? The post, hole, the post holes aren't all that big. I believe they're about, say, 2 to 2.5 mil in diameter. And they are situated facing in even directions. They aren't angled. They aren't diagonal. Okay, so there you go. Ooh, shit. Yeah. The center portion, if you take the Delrin piece out, is where you can situate your cotton wicks so that you have like a mini juice well right in the middle. Because if you notice, the deck is flat. It's a flat deck that you got there with the airflow channels right there. Make sure you do not obstruct the air holes when you're tucking your cotton tails down. Otherwise, you're going to get either a gurgle, spit back, or leaking. Nobody likes any of those. So that's what you're hoping to avoid. Whenever you coil, Line them up as best you can, try not to get the leads to touch one another in the center so that they don't short out. And you should get a coil if you're building a quad that looks something like this. All four lighting up concurrently. Okay, so that is the interior of it. Now I'm going to explain how the top cap works relative to that. Now using the competition top cap, one thing you're going to notice is that you are getting a huge ass amount of vapor but you're not losing all that much flavor. Now, why is that? I'm going to show you. The, uh, the reason behind that is the distance of your coils to the air holes, the perforated air holes that circle the entire diameter of the competition top cap. So if you look at it right there down the barrel, you can see how close they are to the air holes. That allows for a huge amount of vapor retention or flavor retention, in spite of the fact that you have an 18 mil diameter drip cap. So it allows you to vape without losing too much flavor. You are losing some, believe me, you are. But it's not as much as you might imagine you would.
the absence of a um, of a cooling fin on the uh, cap makes it a bit difficult to vape it cons um, consistently or straight, but it doesn't make it impossible. Now for the uh, for the cons that I was going to talk about, first off is the fact that the base is uh, the base ring, the airflow ring, and the uh, the base itself are made of brass. Now that that little gunky buildup you see there, that patina you got growing around it, that didn't come stock. This was nice, shiny, and gold when I first got it. Now, the aesthetic impact isn't as big as the performance impact. I'm not saying you're, you're, you're getting a brass taste, but you are having some difficulty screwing it on and screwing it off of your atomizers. That's one con for me. Now, the bottom has this, uh, not sure if it's stainless steel or if it's silver-coated copper. It has an adjustable pin, which also, when you screw it all the way in, tightens down on the airflow channel, or the airflow ring. So you have the serial number engraved, mine is 0700. You have it engraved on the bottom, and that's what it looks like right there. The drawback uh, of the brass contact, or the, yeah, the brass lower portion of the atomizer, makes it difficult to screw on and screw off sometimes. Another uh, well, not really a flaw, it might just be on my own device and not so for others, is that the threading sometimes jams, but rarely does. It, it has jammed on me at times, but more or less the threading fits on nice and tight and pretty snug. I would have preferred an O-ring. Honestly, I would have, but the threading isn't all that bad anyway. In terms of the difference between the competition top cap and the standard top cap, I like the flavor retention of the standard one and the uh, the amount of cooling that I'm getting out of it, but uh, the versatility of the uh, the atomizer it isn't quite as versatile as you might think because you would have to switch caps out and that means carrying the other cap with you everywhere you go. But the fact that you're getting a decent amount of flavor retention on the competition top cap is um, it's a big plus. I mean, you could actually vape this straight without getting dizzy or without missing out on the flavor all that much. So. It's a, it's a pretty decent atomizer. Now, for price point, I'm not going to discuss it because, again, international prices and local Philippine prices may vary depending on where you get it. But in the Philippines, it retails uh, uniformly. So wherever you buy it, it's going to cost the same. Now, the competition top cap, as mentioned, is available as a promotional um, freebie if you pre-ordered it. So you get it for free if you got it in advance. If you don't, you're going to have to buy it separately. Now, it may not be a necessity because you're getting a fair amount or an extremely good amount of um, vapor output with a standard cap, but if you're joining those competitions, then you're going to want to pick one of these up. By way of price point, I would say it's priced above average, so it's, uh, it's pricier than most. However, the versatility behind it would somewhat justify the price or the amount that you're going to be shelling out for it. In terms of performance, I really don't have... Um, anything negative to say about it because it gives you the option to vape extreme at quad coils at super low ohms or you could you could do the the whole chill thing and just go for a dual coil single coil i wouldn't recommend because it sort of defe defeats the purpose of having four poles and four channels and a selection that allows you to open up to four of them so um, if you are a single coil vapor, this is definitely not for you. If you're into cloud chasing or if you like warm vapor and you like versatility and you like getting that flavor hit while you're cloud chasing, this is definitely something you're going to want to pick up. Now the, um, the last bit I wanted to, to, uh, to discuss is technical support. So for any product concerns, you're going to notice that your atomizer, when you purchase it, comes with a... Um, a a slip of paper with a number on it. It says uh, PN, which I assume is product number or process control number. I wouldn't know, but uh, mine is listed here. The, uh, the reason behind this is to better address customer queries about uh, any concerns or issues they may be encountering with their, uh, with their particular device. Now, what, how it works is that you, uh, you input the product number and the complaint or the concern that you have, and it generates a trouble ticket, somewhat uh, similar to what you would get if you work at your local BPO or call center. So there's a ticket number that is produced, which is relative to your concern, and their tech support team will address, in turn, whatever concerns arise using the product number that you, uh, you provided. So that's pretty much their after-sales um, marketing. So that's how they're going to, um, to address whatever kinks or issues you have with the atomizer. 
In terms of drip tips, everything sits nice and snug on it. I haven't had any problems with heating or with drip tips not fitting. Since it has an adjustable pin and most mods nowadays feature adjustable positive points of contact, it's very easy for you to have it sit flush. I just don't like the fact that I have this little thing jutting out right here, but uh, that's a minor gripe. So I believe it makes the base area 24 millimeters in diameter, so it's not exactly a uniform look that you're getting. But that's, uh, th that's all aesthetic. It's not, uh, it doesn't affect the performance in any way. So overall, yes, it is a, you know, it's, it's one of those atomizers that I would say is a, um, a good to have one. Not so much must have unless you're, you're, you're really a hardcore quad coil, warm vape, massive cloud type of guy. If, uh, if you're on a budget, this definitely isn't for you because as I mentioned, it's, um, it's one of those pricier drip type atomizers out there. By no means a bad one, but uh, definitely a bit expensive. So that's pretty much the, uh, the geyser for you. Uh, I'm going to post links to their group on the, uh, the video description. I'm going to post the, uh, the links to the, uh, the Dark Ronin page there, as well as who to contact for concerns, for uh, reseller inquiries, or for general retail inquiries. You can, you can send them a private message. So that's pretty much the geyser, and I hope you all had a blast with it, because I sure as fuck did. So I'll catch you all soon, all right? Y'all be part. Cheers.